Washington Journal continues. We're joined next by Tom Fitton, who is president of the group Judicial Watch, here with us to talk to talk this morning about a, a number of issues, including the um, the investigations into President Trump ahead of the impeachment efforts uh, last year and the year before. Tom Fitton, first of all, tell us about your group, Judicial Watch. What's its main focus? Uh, Judicial Watch is a nonprofit educational foundation that seeks to uh, educate the American people about what its government's up to. The way we do that is by uh, using the Freedom of Information Act to gain access to government information and also uh, the legal process to confront and expose uh, government illicit behavior, misconduct, and, uh, and activity that is outside the law. We saw your piece in the Washington Times, which was um, published yesterday, Tracing Adam Schiff's Subpoena hip Hypocrisy, and the subhead, unlike Schiff's own spy games, the Justice Department used court-authorized grand jury process to obtain Schiff's records. What were you uh, aiming to, to, to get at in this, this uh, editorial, this op-ed? <laughs> well, Judicial Watch had sued for secret subpoenas that Schiff had issued that targeted the phone records of the president's lawyer, lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. He got those phone records, other phone records, and then he used those phone records to uncover more phone records. You know, you call people when you're talking on the phone, obviously, and he published those phone records. So he secretly subpoenaed phone records and then published them and they included the phone records of Rudy Giuliani, his colleague, Devin Nunes, the president's lawyers, Jay Sekulow, a journalist, John Solomon, and so then I hear this noise about uh, Schiff complaining about him being the target, potentially, or of a grand jury subpoena or other lawful subpoenas, uh, and then him complaining about it. When, in fact, he's telling us in court that, A, we can't get access to the records, and B, he's telling the courts uh, that this is essentially unreviewable, that the Congress can issue subpoenas without having to go through a grand jury, without having to go to a federal court, without having to tell anyone on anything they want, practically speaking. So, you know, it was Rudy Giuliani and the abuse of President Trump, uh, but it can be anyone. Anyone watching now can have their record subpoenaed, not just phone records, medical records, other records, who knows what else. And this is a power that the Pelosi House says it has. And those of uh, those of you who are watching who support Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff and hate Donald Trump, just so you know, this is a power if left unchecked, Republicans can use. On the on specifically on those phone records though, did the 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 Adam Schiff, the chairman of that committee, get any pushback from um, from the bench on on these requests? No, he didn't go through the court. He just sent the subpoenas to uh, reportedly AT and T or other phone companies. And they turned their records over to them. The, the, the targets of the subpoenas had uh, no ability to go in and object because I don't think they found out uh, they were the target of subpoenas until their records were published in, their, in the impeachment reports and uh, efforts that uh, Schiff was pushing. You said that the individuals targeted by those, uh, by those subpoenas hadn't known because they were previously kept under wraps, right? Right. And, but there was no court process. So it wasn't like you could have given them a check to the court once they were obtained. Uh, you know, the records at issue here for Adam Schiff, we don't know what, if anything, he's being investigated for, whether he just was caught up in a broader subpoena. You know, those records are subject to grand jury protections in terms of secrecy and, and, other, and other protections. Now those recipients can go in and argue to the courts uh, what what they uh, need to in order to protect their constitutional rights, that wasn't available to uh, the targets of the Schiff subpoenas. To the best of your like understanding, they're, they're in court saying that they that that this right is unbridled, practically speaking. To the best of your understanding, what was the you, you said he published the, these records? That's published, I assume, in the committee records or elsewhere. What was the what was Adam Schiff's intent in doing that? Oh, to harass the president. I mean, that's you know. <laughs> I know what he did. His intent is what I can speculate on. My speculation is that he abused the Sixth Amendment and other constitutional rights of the president and the constitutional rights of uh, the targets of the subpoenas and those whose records were published uh, as part of a jihad against President Trump. And now he's complaining that the Justice Department 
was asking questions of him secretly. But contrary to what he did, it was under court process. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, we hear from the Justice Department that they're independent of the Biden White House. Joe Biden complains about subpoenas to journalists. So the Justice Department says they're going to stop doing that, practically speaking. And then separately now, we have the Justice Department shutting down this investigation into Schiff. And by the way, it, was, it implicated Eric, Eric Swalwell as well. And I just think it's interesting how quickly the Justice Department jumps to squelch investigations into uh, the president's allies in the media and in Congress. Tom Fitton's our guest. He uh, leads a judicial watch. Your calls are welcome. 202-748-8001 for Republicans, Democrats, 202-748-8000. And for all others, independents and all others, 202-748-8002. Tom Fitton, in 2019, your group filed suit against um, uh, Adam Schiff and the House Judiciary Committee on obtaining records. What happened in that lawsuit? Well, we didn't win. Uh, you know, the lower court ruled the speech or debate clause protects the secrecy of these records. And the upper court, the appellate court, um, also uh, agreed. Uh, it's interesting because we didn't sue under FOIA because Congress exempts itself from the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, we sued under the public's uh, common law right of access to government records. And uh, at least one of the judges, at least on the appellate court, said this is an interesting issue. And, uh, you know, they, she couldn't overrule the circuit here. Uh, but certainly uh, the issue of whether or not the public has a right to access these records uh, deserves balancing with uh, the speech or debate privilege that Congress has. You know, and it pops up again in the January 6 uh, debates because we can't get records from the police force of uh, the U.S. Capitol uh, because uh, that police force is not subject to FOIA. So there's all this secrecy around the handling of January 6th because Congress has immunized itself or attempted to uh, from the transparency requirements other government officials follow. On January 6th, would you be in favor of a 9-11 style investigation into it? I, a commission is a political process. I'm talking about a legal process that uh, Judicial Watch is pursuing. These records should be public, and the public can decide what to make of them. We've asked for the video records. We haven't gotten them. We've had to go and ask for other records about Nancy Pelosi's communications. We've asked for records about the shooting of Ashley Babbitt. We haven't gotten them. I don't know what they're hiding here, but uh, we aim to find out. You've touched on this in, in your in your op-ed in the Washington Times. You accuse Adam Schiff of running a spy operation. Explain that a little bit more in detail. Well, when someone takes your phone records without you knowing about it, frankly, without any legal authority, and then publishes them, that's a spy operation. And that's what Schiff was doing. Uh, when you look at the records that were um, published and what Schiff tried to make out of him, there was no there there, so it was just it was just a smear operation. Uh, but uh, this is concerning. I, you know, are your phone records being published? I ask you, dear listener and dear viewer, or being a secret, or being obtained? I don't know. We don't know because Congress says they can do it in secret. Do you do any of the people that had their record um, their records uh, subpoenaed by the the intelligence committee have any of those people have do they have any legal recourse on that? Maybe, maybe I'm no lawyer, so I defer to the lawyers as to whether anyone can sue about it. Our guest is Tom Fitton. We welcome your calls and comments. Let's go first to uh, Okeechobee, Florida. We'll hear from uh, D. Good morning, Democrats line. Yeah, hey, good morning. Okay, but the host, okay, I'm speaking to you right now. Hey, Tom, I'm going to get to you in a minute. Uh, uh -huh. You as the host, okay? I, I'm, I'm a Republican. I called the Republican line this morning already since Tom's been on, and the phone rings and rings and rings and rings and rings, and finally I got hung up on twice. I called a Democratic line, and boom, there I am online right now. So you need to get that fixed. Okay, Mr. Tom Fitton, I watch you religiously, and you are the only one we have out there besides Cruz that's really getting down into the dirt trying to figure out what's going on in this country here, okay? And I wish there was some way we can get those cockroaches out of Congress. That means our Republican cockroaches who are hiding in the walls and are not coming out. They need to be removed. 
Okay, but you, Tom, hey, congrats, buddy. I'm going to follow you till the end of the earth. Good luck. Bye-bye. Tom Fenton, any, any response? Okay, Lakeland, Michigan, we'll go to the independent line and hear from Derek. You're on with Tom Fenton. Go ahead. Good morning, C-SPAN. Good morning, America. Hey, I just wanted to say, Tom, thank you very much. Uh, I believe that uh, investigative journalism is pretty much dead, but uh, you give extra life to that. <laughs> And uh, I really appreciate your educational foundation. I just have three quick things. One is we heard in the impeachment trial many, many times that no one's above the law, not even the president. Um, we now know that Hunter Biden smokes crack, which I believe is illegal in the United States. He buys prostitutes and escorts, which once again is illegal in the United States, maybe not in Nevada somewhere. That's one question. Second question is, uh, the governor of Virginia, has any journalist actually ever gotten an answer on whether he was dressed up as the Ku Klux Klan member or the blackface? Third question, what do you think of the organization Lawfare? And how do they work with Brookings Institute? Because they're very uh, tied up in the impeachment process. Several issues there, Derek. Tom Fitton, you care to tackle any of them? You know, the Hunter Biden issue, again, is one of these elephants in the room here in Washington, D.C. He's under federal criminal investigation. It's been confirmed uh, under any other circumstance. We we already saw that during the Trump administration. You would have had a special counsel. We need a special counsel to investigate the Hunter Biden issue, A, because he's the president's son, and B, because there's plenty of evidence that also implicates the president in some of his misdealings. Uh, secondly, with respect to um, uh, the topic, uh, the third topic about lawfare, you know, I don't know about, about them specifically, but there's this there's this group of folks who have ends with the Justice Department and the deep state national security establishment that have defended the indefensible, and um, it's it's you know that's just part of the firmament here in Washington D.C. And I forget what the second one issue was. Do you remember? I, I don't. I, I remember the third, but not, not the second, like you. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question for you on, uh, on Twitter asking about when is Judicial Watch going to publish the cost of Trump's golf outing, outings like they did for Obama? Uh, we have in the past published the costs, and other media come in and started doing their own different uh, cost analysis, uh, which go way beyond anything we did for Obama. It was interesting when we were. Uh, talking about uh, Trump's costs initially uh, uh, in the first part of his administration, I was on, I think, every major network talking about it. But when we were talking about Obama, uh, we didn't get the same sort of media coverage. So the media's interest in the, uh, the cost of the respective presidential travels, I thought, was uh, quite interesting. Uh, obviously, they weren't interested in what Obama was doing as much as Trump. You know, and I say this about Obama. I said it about Trump, and I'll say it about uh, Bill Biden. The cost of the presidency is too much. It costs too much to travel, uh, for him to travel. Uh, there's got to be cheaper ways to do it that protect the national security and their personal safety. Let's hear from Connie on our Republican line in Pekin, Illinois. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Fenton. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Donald Trump never did anything wrong to be impeached for. And I want to say about Joe Biden and the trip to Russia, uh, his first comment when he was asked about the, the um, assault on the White House, his comment was, a police officer was killed. That was a lie. Someone uh, interrupted him with a question. They wanted to shut him up, and it did, thank goodness. The only person killed at the White House was just, as you mentioned, uh, Ashley Babbitt. And I wonder if her family got uh, 6 or $12 million because of her being killed. Uh, we're we're in a backward country right now. Tom Fitton, care to respond? 
you know, to be clear, Ashley Babbitt was killed at the Capitol on January 6th. Her family has also sued for records. Uh, I don't think they've gotten any money from the government yet. Uh, and I agree, there was no good faith reason to impeach Donald Trump. And um, it was an abuse of that uh, constitutional power. Uh, and it was used twice. Um, it was an assault on self-government. Can I ask you about some, uh, want to ask you about some reporting from the New York Times and other outlets. The headline from the Times says, hunting leaks. Trump officials focused on Democrats in Congress. The Justice Department seized records from Apple for metadata from House Intelligence Committee members, their aides and family members. Was this sort of a tit for tat for the, the metadata sought by the phone records sought by the Intelligence Committee? No, I think it was done before uh, that was done. Um, what I find interesting about those news articles is that you don't know what the investigation was about. Was it about leaks? Who was being investigated? Who was the target? And when uh, news articles are vague like that, it means someone has something they don't want coming out. So I want more information about why Adam Schiff was the subject of a grand jury investigation. The media coverage has been, how dare anyone uh, investigate Adam Schiff? And I don't believe it can be the case that uh, congressmen or journalists uh, get to be immune from grand jury investigations and lawful subpoenas. Now, whether I trust the Justice Department to investigate a jaywalking, that's another matter. You know, I may be with Adam Schiff on that. I think the Justice Department uh, has proven itself incapable of fairly investigating anyone, uh, but certainly Adam Schiff isn't immune from the investigations. That's what uh, the rule of law is supposed to be about. Why is that the case with the Justice Department? Has it become too politicized on both sides as new administration comes in? Is the, the why do you why do you suppose that, in your opinion, that 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 it's become that way? I mean, we could talk a long time about that, but typically, when you are talking about politicians who are caught up in investigations by the Justice Department, almost nothing normal happens. It's it 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 it, it really kind of distorts the what ought to be a, a fair uh, uh, investigative and prosecutorial process. And uh, that's true for both Democrats and Republicans. And usually the Republicans have most recently have been the wrong end of that. What was the issue or issues that led you to uh, where you are now in terms of your group, Judicial Watch? Why did you start it? Well, I didn't start it. It was around a, little, a few years before I joined it. But, you know, we had the, you know, the Clinton corruption back when we were founded and uh, 2000, excuse me, 1994. Uh, and uh, it, it, we've got this transparency crisis that's been going on at the federal government for years and years. And under the Obama administration, things metastasize in terms of lawlessness by the federal government. And, uh, you know, President Trump uh, was targeted by some of the folks that engaged in the lawlessness during the Obama administration. And, and now we're back to uh, square one in terms of contempt for the rule of law. I mean, that's especially true in the immigration area where uh, Joe Biden has uh, effectively shut down uh, large portions of border enforcement and virtually all interior enforcement of our immigration laws, a completely lawless approach. It's very dangerous. So, you know, it's one thing to be secretive. It's one thing to have government officials try to get away with breaking the rules. It's another thing when doing so uh, places uh, innocent Americans in harm's way. Let's hear from Ann, Democrats line, Germantown, Maryland. Go ahead. Um, I have a couple questions. Number one, you said you're a nonprofit. You didn't say you're a right organization. You forgot to mention that, that you're out for the, um, you know, the Republicans or the Trump party, shall we say. You're on their side. That's number one. Number two. Well, well that's not true. We're not. Oh, please. Number two, um, how much did he make off of the Secret Service? How many hundreds of thousands of dollars did that miserable human being make off of the Secret Service? And how much did he steal from Americans? Are you talking about Joe Biden or President Trump? Who do you think I'm talking about? Well, I asked because Joe Biden uh, initially was getting rent from the Secret Service when he was vice president. We uh, uncovered that and, and, and investigated that. Uh, other media have investigated that the Secret Service uh, paid Trump for the use of his facilities, which is something that happens in the ordinary course. So did, would, 
with the amount that the Secret Service paid over time, was it about what, what uh, any president over a course of four years, about what they would spend for uh, their needs to cover a president when he traveled? You know, it depends where the president is traveling. He was staying in, uh, obviously, Mar-a-Lago, so you have paid Mar-a-Lago prices. Uh, they use hotels around there, presumably. When President Obama uh, flew to Hawaii for his uh, extensive vacationing, uh, it was the prices were significant for obviously uh, for obvious reasons of being in Hawaii uh, to put up Secret Service uh, to protect him. Let's go to uh, Jimmy Midlothian, Virginia, on the independent line. Yes, good morning, and thank you for taking my call. You know, they talk about the attack, you know, January 6th. Let's talk about a real attack that happened. It's called Benghazi, and nothing has been happening about that since. That was an attack on this country when 13 people were killed, and everybody seems to forget it. You know, we saw... Obama sitting there. We saw, you know, Hilda, Hilda Witch Clinton sitting there. And, of course, Biden is his usual idiot self watching it on television. Everybody did. But nothing has been done. Where is the investigation going with that? So they talk about the border. Let's, let's ask, too, why hasn't this Harris chick gone there and seen what's really going on? And the huge number of people that are coming to this country. I guess they just want to keep on adding on to the Democrats and get as many votes as they can. So, you know, let's get with some real issues here as to what's happening in this country. All right, Tom, Tom Fitton, any response? Well, four people were killed in Benghazi, and certainly Judicial Watch investigated it in what I consider to be the most significant non-governmental investigation in recent American history. Our investigation led the disclosure of documents that forced the creation of a select committee on Benghazi. And also also uh, our FOIAs in that area uncovered the Clinton emails, uh, which uh, the disclosure of which changed the course of history, it can be uh, fairly argued. Uh, did we get the full accountability we wanted for Benghazi? No, but we got significant accountability in large measure thanks to, uh, dare I say it, Judicial Watch. Do you think the former president, Donald Trump, abused his authority in asking the former attorney general, Bill Barr, to investigate people like uh, people like uh, Adam Schiff? Well, I don't know if he did that. Uh, certainly he's within his rights to do so if there's evidence of crimes. You know, asking the Justice Department to do its job, and I think Schiff should have been criminally investigated as it relates to the mishandling and the leaking of classified information. In a variety of uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, you know, there's this this idea that the Justice Department thinks it's independent of the president. To a degree, it thinks that that's unconstitutional, and it's uh, uh, the president has the right, and frankly, should uh, pursue it more vigorously to get the Justice Department to do its job to investigate, especially uh, very public issues of public corruption, where you know the caller previously. Where, you know, Hillary Clinton's emails, for instance, Justice Department refuses to do anything about it, refused to even look at it again under President Trump. They just think they answer uh, in many ways to no one with the regard to their decision making on prosecutions or even to whether to ask questions. Forget about prosecuting someone. They didn't even want to ask anyone any questions on a lot of these issues. And it didn't matter whether Obama or Trump was running things. Let's hear from Mike in uh, Wall, New Jersey. Mike's on the Democrats line. Mike, go ahead. Good morning, C-SPAN. Thank Good you morning. for taking my call. And as, thank you for taking my call and for always having somebody that is totally different from my point of view, but it makes you think. Mr. Finn, I do have one question. You said you weren't a lawyer. What is your background to make you part of the judicial watch? Doesn't make a little bit of sense. Is there a constitutional um, knowledge that you have that you bring to the table and the woman well, earlier I'm, I'm said just... that you stated no, pardon me and the woman earlier said that you were said you weren't bipartisan and i think you tried to make the argument that you were i've watched you almost every time that you're on c-span because you certainly get my irish up which is a good thing and um <laughs> you seem to be very partisan um thank you for taking my call uh, I'm just a regular guy, and I'm, I'm running Judicial Watch. You don't you don't need any special expertise to be concerned about our country and um, uh, 
try to use a group with, if, in concert with other fine Americans who work at Judicial Watch and our supporters to hold the government accountable. And uh, you know, our results speak for themselves in terms of the uh, whether I'm prepared and I have the background to do the work. Uh, we're the, the largest and most effective government watchdog group in the country, if not the world. Uh, Judicial Watch is nonpartisan. I mean, just because Democrats get caught up in criminal investigations and their misconduct is grievous in office and we criticize them doesn't mean that we're doing it to advance the interests of the Republican Party. Uh, Judicial Watch, for instance, sued the Trump administration probably more than any other group in America. Uh, and we will sue the Biden administration more than any other group in America. And whoever comes next, well, I, doubt, I bet you we're going to be there. And I've raised issues about the abuse of power by the Justice Department that applies to both Republicans and Democrats. My concerns about Congress is a concern about Congress subpoenaing people, whether or not Democrats run Congress or Republicans run Congress. I want Congress to be transparent. Republicans haven't been there for me on that. I haven't been there for the American people on that. Uh, and I've been critical of Republicans in terms of their failure and cynical approach to handling corruption issues. So yeah, we're nonpartisan. Monty, New York, please say good morning to John on the independent line. Yeah, hi. Thank you for great for your great work. I'm wondering why it's always the Republicans that they they prosecute and put in jail. But like uh, James Comey and McCabe, they always get out, even though there's a grand jury and everything. They end up getting out. And I'm also wondering if you know anything about the Durham report when it's coming up. Right. I, I'm having difficulty to hear the, the, the caller. Did uh, we'll, we'll let we'll yeah, go. I just wanted to know why Republicans were uh, seemingly prosecuted, um, like uh, like but Comey and people like that get away. Now Comey nominally was a Republican and he got away. Uh, in many ways, okay, it's the deep it. state who you know and your connections and the institutional prerogatives of the FBI, the DOJ. It shouldn't become a surprise that the DOJ and the FBI are hesitant to prosecute leaders of the DOJ and FBI. Uh, with respect to the Durham report, I don't know when it's coming out. Um, I'd be interested to read the report, uh, but Durham was hired to be a, to, a, to presumably investigate and prosecute the worst corruption scandal in American history, which is the Obama targeting of Trump uh, and the continuation of that targeting uh, by his allies after Trump came into office. Uh, so the report, you know, that in a quarter will get you a cup of coffee. Uh, where are the prosecutions, let alone where is the questioning? As I said, there's no, there's no evidence in my view that Durham has done um, any serious investigation of the matters he was asked to investigate. Any indication of when that report's coming out? I have none. It's now June. He was appointed in April, I think, of 2019. There was one prosecution that kind of fizzled in some respects. And uh, that's the end. Of, and there's no other activity that we can see. All right. To uh, Pam in Pam in Burlington, North Carolina. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Um, Mr. Fenton, I've watched you several times on Fox mainly. Um, and my question for you is this. Michael Cohen went to prison in part due to uh, paying hush money to a person that claimed to have an affair with Donald Trump and he was Donald Trump was named as a individual one in the court filings and what I'd like to know is do you think that that's fair because Donald Trump actually signed one of those checks paying Michael Cohen back in February of 2017 so I just wonder what your opinion is on that, since you're all about um, ridding D.C. of corruption. So yeah, I question. saw that. I thought that was corrupt, that the Justice Department uh, uh, got him to sign off on that. He was never tried on that. Um, I'm not even sure he committed any crimes related to that. Uh, and this is a typical uh, approach that the Justice Department had towards Donald Trump, change the rules change a confidentiality agreement uh, for which money is paid, which is a standard op, which is standard, uh, and, and, and try to make it into a crime or a campaign of finance violation. 
that was an abuse of power by the Justice Department. And it shows you, again, the whole, frankly, investigation of Cohen uh, was an abuse of Trump and his right to an, having an attorney. And Cohen mishandled the, the targeting of him by the Justice Department, uh, in my view, by lying about the president and, and violating his fiduciary duties as a lawyer to the president. Tom Fitton is president of Judicial Watch. More at judicialwatch.org. Tom Fitton, thanks for being with us. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. And ahead here on Washington Journal with President Biden is set to announce his uh, crime strategy this afternoon on the, up, on the increasing crime in the country. We'll talk next to Jeff Asher, who is with Datalytics. He's analyzing uh, crime trends across the country. Jeff Asher and your calls and comments.